Rohani uh, Sharma. Uh, the title of the paper is Exact and Approximate Diagram Bandwidth. And the other authors are Pallavi Jain, Bhakti Kanish, William Loshe, and Saket Sora. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, as the title says, the talk is about uh, the bandwidth problem in digraphs and we'll study it from the viewpoint of exact exponential time algorithms and approximations clubbed together. Okay. So let me begin with the uh, definition of the bandwidth problem. So this is quite a classical problem. Uh, so in this problem, you're given an undirected graph G and the goal is to come up with an ordering of the graph where, informally speaking, the endpoints of any edge are not very far away in the ordering. So this is formalized here. So you want to find a permutation of the vertex set such that, let's read the English thing first, a, a, a permutation which minimizes the maximum stretch of any edge. Okay, so this is written here. So uh, look at any edge and uh, pi of u denotes the position of the vertex u and pi of v denotes the position of the vertex v in the ordering and look at the difference between the positions. So and look at the maximum such difference. This difference is called the stretch of the edge uv. We want a permutation that minimizes this maximum stretch over all edges. Right? So uh, let's look, an, look at an example of this. This is the graph G, and uh, this is one ordering of the vertices of the of the graph G. And if we look at any edge in uh, of of this graph in this ordering, if we look at the two endpoints of any edge, you notice that the difference between the position values of two endpoints is at most two. And in this case, it's not difficult to see that one cannot have an ordering where this difference, which is called the stretch of edge, is 1. In this case, we say that this ordering has bandwidth 2. This, or, this ordering is an ordering of this graph, and it has bandwidth 2. Okay. So as I said before, bandwidth is a classical problem. It occurs in a lot of real life scenarios. And one typical framework in which it occurs over and over again is the following. So here, uh, it's, it's like, uh, imagine the red hut-like things to be facilities. And uh, the uh, blue edges or arcs represent the links between the facilities, which denotes uh, the need of the facilities to communicate with each other. And uh, they are arranged in a linear fashion, in a linear ordering. And the distance between two facilities in the linear order is proportional to the cost of communication between two facilities or the delay in communication or the effort required to communicate between two facilities. And again, in the, in, in the bandwidth problem, the goal is to arrange the facilities so that the effort required to communicate between any two facilities or the cost of communication between any two facilities is minimized. So this is a typical framework that the bandwidth problem encapsulates. So with this article, our goal is to add uh, some nuances to this model. We'll see what those nuances are. And, and then we, we'll see a problem that encapsulates, in, encapsulates those nuances of the model. And then we'll try to solve that. Okay? So let's first see what are those nuances. So, um, so there are two nu nuances that I've added here. One is if you notice, now the links are directed earlier the links were undirected. So what does directed links mean? So as we said, in the earlier case, undirected links uh, represented the need to communicate, but the need to communicate might not be mutual. I might want to talk to someone, but it might not be the other way around, especially, for example, in deliveries model. A might want to deliver something to B, but that, not, but that might not be the case. It might not be the case in the other way. So that's one thing. And the second thing is a few, like I'm sure you would have noticed, that I've made this, uh, this road or this layout I've slanted it. And this slant represents that, like, suppose the facilities are to be placed on some slope. Okay? So if, if that's the model, it is but natural to assume, to, uh, to assume that if facility at the bottom of the slope wants to communicate to the, fa uh, to the facility at the top of the cost, it, it should be harder. Right? And whereas the other way around, the facility at the top of the slope wants to communicate with the bottom of the slope, it should be relatively easier. And we want to, and we want to encapsulate these things into a problem. Okay. So, uh, so for example, in this case, in this particular example, if you notice, like if one wants to communicate to three, like the cost of communication is two. By two, I mean like it has to go two steps to communicate to three, right? Whereas if I look at another ordering, 
like this is an ordering where I've just reversed the location of the facilities. Like it was one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six, four, five, four, three. In this order, if you notice that any facility which is below, uh, uh, like uh, and uh, 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 and uh, look at the facilities on 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 the top of it to which it wants to communicate. All those facilities are located at a distance one from it. So if you notice these these uh, larger links, they are downward links now. So any facility that wants to communicate to a top, a to, like uh, a facility that is higher up, it doesn't have to go to a distance of more than one, right? But for the below things, for, for the reverse things, we don't care. I mean, as of now, we assume that the downward communication is free because it's easy. Okay. So this is what we want to encapsulate, and this can easily be encapsulated in this problem which is the digraph bandwidth problem. So what we have done is we've just lifted the bandwidth problem on undirected graphs to directed graphs. So in this problem, we're given a directed graph G, and the goal is to find a permutation of the vertex set such that, in this case, we only want to minimize the stretch of the forward arcs. The forward arcs are the ones whose head, uh, no, whose tail appears before its head in the ordering. Right. And uh, so, so if you notice, this, this problem actually models this because, first of all, there are directions in the graph. And secondly, because we are only interested in uh, minimizing the forward, forward stretches, we are only interested in minimizing the forward communication, and we assume that the backward communication is for free, at least in this model. Okay? So this is the problem of interest for this uh, talk. And uh, uh, I, I, another remark that I would want to make is, like this is not uh, the previous slide is not the sole reason that we are interested in this problem. Like as a theoretician, uh, like if if there are if, if there is a classical problem that is well studied in undirected graph, it is it like it, it is a natural curiosity I, I I assume for a lot of theoreticians to see what happens when we lift that problem to directed graphs because directed graphs like behave very differently and and problems become very significantly harder there and. To justify, like, and now there could be many ways of generalizing the bandwidth problem to directed graphs, and then, amongst all the possibilities, why did we, uh, uh, like, why did we choose this possibility where we are only considering forward arcs and working with it? Yeah. Sorry. I mean, uh, th that's subjective, but in this model, we consider that reverse is free. Like, I mean. I mean, you could consider models where you can also add some weights on the reverse arcs, but in this problem, we we don't like. Because this this problem itself is uh, like considerably hard. Harder. Could be yes. I mean we have not we have not studied that, but yes, that's the belief. It could be more harder. I mean. Could be very expensive. Expensive as in? Like you said, free. Yes. No, sure. Uh, like uh, so, the motivation for coming up with this model was again. I mean, imagine. Imagine like you, you're placing some stores uh, on a hill station and the, the, there is a slope there and you have to place the facilities on a slope and suppose some deliveries have to be made uh, between the facilities and like uh, uh, and on hill stations or normally on hills, the cost of traveling upwards is significantly much more, uh, significantly more than cost of going down. So, so, uh, so there are links, there are links. So links will tell us I want from where to where I want to go. If there's a link from A to B, I want to go from A to B. Now, when I have placed these links on this slope, suppose I have placed A below B, then if I have to go from A to B, I have to go from down to up. But if I've placed A up uh, above B, then I have to go downwards. So now the links are already there. We know this communication has to happen. So the best case is we, we, we make sure that uh, like uh, everyone only does downward communication. But that's not always possible because if the, if the graph is not a DAG, you'll have forward arcs also. So the goal is to make sure that if at all there are forward communications that are going to happen, you ensure that like the forward communications are not very costly. But as you said, of course, this problem makes sense. Like you can add some weights or some cost to the backward arcs also, but that's not what we consider here. Okay. Uh, so yes, so yeah, I was saying that as a theoretician, like uh, so, so we have uh, pulled this problem up from undirected graphs to directed graphs, and then why this generalization to directed graphs? There could be many ways of generalizing it, but to justify that, I, I just want you to look at this. This the like this is some sample of problems. Uh, the this side represents the 
undirected variants, like the definitions in the undirected case, and this side represents the definitions in the directed case. Just, let, let's just look at these two of them. So for example, cuts. The way cuts are defined in undirected graphs, it's like you want to find a partition of the uh, vertex set such that you want to minimize the number of arcs going across the path. But when you generalize it to directed cuts, a natural notion is now you want to minimize the arcs going in one direction. You fix one direction and you want to minimize that, right? Similarly, there is another cut, uh, layout problem called the cut fit problem where you again seek for a layout, linear layout of the vertex set and the goal is that uh, if you look at any prefix of the ordering, for example, prefixes like in this case, the first three vertices is one prefix. If you look at any prefix, you want, to, uh, you want to ensure that there are not a lot of edges whose one endpoint is in that prefix and the other is in a suffix. And you want to like uh, go over all such prefixes. So this is the cut width in the undirected case. And again, when you go to directed case, instead of saying that we are interested in the arcs going from, uh, going between prefix and suffix, you fix a direction. For example, in directed cut width, we say that we are only interested in arcs that start from prefix and end at suffix. And we are not worried about the arcs in the other direction, right? So, and similarly, there is another, another problem and there are a bunch of problems and this is, this is a typical way in which layout problems or cut problems are pulled from undirected settings to directed settings. So in that setting, we believe that this is a fair enough generalization to directed graphs. Okay. And why I'm even trying to justify all this, like if it is so natural and also another thing, the, the problem name, if it would have strike to someone, why did we use digraph bandwidth and why not directed bandwidth? I mean, going with the convention. That's because uh, the bandwidth problem was earlier studied on directed graphs, but this was studied only on DAGs. And when I said it was studied on DAGs, it doesn't mean that they had defined a notion for graphs and it was studied on DAGs. The definition originally existed only for DAGs. So this was, and, and they named that problem as directed bandwidth problem. So in literature, directed bandwidth is the following problem. So given an undirected, uh, so you're given a directed acyclic graph G, it's a DAG, and you want to find a topological ordering of the DAG. So there are no backward arcs in the ordering, which minimizes all the stretches of all forward arcs. In this case, all forward arcs are all arcs, so the stretches of all arcs. Okay. So this was studied, but this is not what we study. Okay, so yes. So again, this paper is about studying diagraph bandwidth problem from the viewpoint of moderately exponential algorithms. And uh, since it's a layout problem, an n factorial algorithm is clear where n represents the number of vertices in the graph, right? So the first step, like, like, like the first question ar that arises is, can we go from n factorial to two power order n? And this paper is an attempt. So of course, we haven't resolved this. We still don't know if there is a two power order n algorithm for this. But as you'll see later, the results that we get are like all of them have running times of this form, but of course there are caveats, we will see. So that's the goal. And uh, again, before describing what we prove or what our results are, I would like to give you a picture of the literature from the undirected bandwidth problem just so that we see how our results fit the bigger picture. So undirected bandwidth has a rich literature, uh, uh, like even from an algorithmic viewpoint, and I've just uh, sorted some things here. So to begin with, this problem is NP hard, this is W hard, this is APX hard, it is just hard. And uh, this hardness is carried forward to our digraph bandwidth problem also because it clearly generalizes the undirected bandwidth problem. But uh, this is XP, by XP we mean that there is an algorithm, there is a polynomial time algorithm for a fixed value of bandwidth. For example, if you want to determine if the graph has directed digraph bandwidth at most 5, 10, a fixed number, then there is a polynomial time algorithm. But because it's not FPT, it's XP, this polynomial time is uniform, like it grows with the value of B. So it's like an n power F of B algorithm. And uh, this is the thing. And then there is this study around single exponential algorithms for this problem. So the first single exponential algorithm appeared in 2000 and that had running time 10 power n. And this was followed by like improvements of the base. So this is one thing. And then the best, the currently the best known single exponential algorithm has running time 4.383 power n. And then there was an attempt to improve the base of this algorithm and people succeeded, but again with a trade-off. So they succeeded, succeeded in designing a 2 power n algorithm, but that came at a cost of introducing 
tree width in the running time. So here t represents the tree width of the running time and not just introducing tree width at the, in the running time but also the tree width uh, like it costs us as an at an exponent of n. So that's the, so this is this is a result. And then the best known approximation because it's APXR so the best known polynomial time approximation is log cube log cube n. And again, because it's apx hard, we don't uh, expect constant factor approximations in polynomial time. There is a study of uh, designing constant factor approximations for this problem in exponential time. Because again, because the problem is apx hard already. So along that line, there is a two factor approximation that runs in this time. And there is an approximation scheme, one plus epsilon approximation algorithms, whose running time is this. And if you notice, this running time is single exponential, but again, there is a dependence on t in the running time. Again, t is the tree width of the graph. Okay. So, okay, so this is the thing. So, we have a set of results, but uh, there are two results that are along the lines of the undirected bandwidth results, and which I would like to point. So, one is we also have a result similar to this, as you will see, which uh, where it is a two power n algorithm for digraph bandwidth and there is an n power t dependence, the tree width dependence. And then we also have an algorithm, uh, we also have a result along this direction. So when I say this direction, so we also have an approximation scheme for digraph bandwidth. So we, are, we can design one plus epsilon approximation uh, algorithms for the problem. And in our case, we are able to get a running time that's independent of t. It, it doesn't depend on tree width, but note that their algorithm, like if you forget about t, the other things are sub-exponential in n. It's log n and root n. We don't have that. We still have n there. But it's a single exponential approximation scheme for digraph bandwidth. So yes, so now I can talk about my results. Um, so these are four set of results. So again, these are algorithms. All of them solve the digraph bandwidth problem. and the uh, the blue colored things represent the running times of different algorithms. So for example, uh, the first algorithm runs in 3 power n, 2 power m time, m is the number of edges. Again, at the first glance, it might look like a stupid algorithm. There's an m sitting at the top of the ex exponent. But note that this algorithm already gives you a 2 power order n algorithms for the k class of sparse digraphs. Okay? And then the second is, as I said, the algorithm along the lines of Amini's result. So we have a 2 power n plus t plus 2 log n kind of an algorithm. And then this is an algorithm which is um, which works for the general case. So it's running time, uh, like let's, let's just focus on one term. L let's say this. It's running time is 4 power n, b power n, where b is the optimal bandwidth. So in, in scenarios where b is small, for example, if b is at most this, this is a 2 power order n algorithm. And then this is the single exponential time approximation scheme that I talked about. So for any epsilon, real epsilon greater than zero, one can find a one plus epsilon approximation for the problem in this time. So if you notice, this is like uh, f of one by epsilon power n time. Okay. So in, 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 the, um, in whatever time I have now, I'll be focusing on this result. I'll give, I'll give a sketch of how we get to this result. And uh, yeah. So note that this is a single exponential time algorithm. And on that note, I would like to remark that all the results that we disc like all these results on undirected bandwidth, which talked about single exponential running time, they all had one template. So I'll, I'll talk about what the template is. So they all had one template. And the reason one is not directly able to design a single exponential uh, algorithm for the digraph bandwidth problem is because things like there are there are problems that just fail in that template and as of now we don't know if not that template then what should one be following to get single exponential algorithms for this okay so i'll talk about that first and then i'll come to our result okay so from now on we'll be working with the decision version of the problem so i'm also given a graph g and i'm also given a number b and the goal is to determine if the there is a ordering of digraph bandwidth b okay so as I said, let's look at what people did to design single exponential algorithms for the undirected case. Okay. So as I said, all the algorithms had the following template. So they were based on what I call the bucket then order thing. So it has two phases. There is a bucketing phase and there is an ordering phase. The ordering phase is different from for different algorithms and that's how they get different running things. But the bucketing phase, the goal of the bucketing phase is the same. So let's talk about what this bucketing phase is. So um, 
let's say this this figure denotes the solution ordering. So this this is what the solution looks like. Okay. So in the bucketing phase, the goal is the following. So we have some buckets, and they have some sizes. So these sizes again vary with algorithm to algorithm. So there is one algorithm that uses b by two. There are different algorithms that that use different numbers. But let's not worry about that. But the bucketing phase uh, desires to achieve the following property. So, so what is the bucketing phase? In the bucketing phase, you want to ensure that you have achieved the following. If this is the solution ordering that you have in your head, that in the bucketing phase, you should have ensured that the first b by two vertices of this solution ordering goes in the first bucket, the next b by two vertices of the solution ordering goes in the second bucket, and so on. So, in some sense, you have you have some handle of how the solution will look like so once you have this bucketing you know there is a solution where you can rearrange these vertices in some way followed by rearrangement of these vertices in some way and so on and get a final ordering like you don't have to do rearrangements amongst buckets that's the goal of the bucketing phase and now believe me I, i'll not talk about this order phase because it's different for different algorithms but believe me that once this bucketing phase is done like you, you get such a bucketing things become easy like you you can drive the algorithm from there okay and so let's talk about how people achieved the bucketing phase in the case of undirected uh, undirected bandwidth and this bucket the algorithm for the bucketing phase was the same for all the algorithms so in the bucketing phase you just fix you, you start with a vertex of the graph an arbitrary vertex of the graph let's say v and you guess which bucket it belongs to to uh, to achieve with the motives of the bucketing phase so to begin with we will have 2 power n by b choice like so if if we have buckets of size b by 2 there are n vertices you will have 2n by b buckets so a ver vertex we will have 2n by b choices right but note that once we have we have spent this much guesses to decide the bucket of v other things become easier for example look at look at any neighbor of v okay so if you look at a neighbor of v uh, uh, given that v belongs to this bucket the neighbor of v doesn't have a lot of choices so because the bucket sizes are of size uh, b by 2 the the neighbor of v cannot be placed for example in this bucket because if you place v in this bucket there will be so many vertices in uh, like in between u and v which will contribute to the stretch of the edge right so once v is fixed the neighbor of v can only go either to the same bucket as v or to this or this bucket and this and this so like there are only five choices where the neighbor of v can go to right so once the bucket of v is decided its its neighbors vertices its its neighbors buckets only have five choices each right and so we can assume that the graph is connected it doesn't uh, spoil the problem so in that case one can achieve this bucketing phase in this much time like phi per n time and that's good enough for us we are, we are, we are aiming to design single exponential algorithms right so the, the, this is a simple bucketing uh, phase for the undirected problem and uh, but when it comes to directed graphs note that this is not true so uh, even when you have decided the bucket of v its neighbor if its neighbor appears before v then it doesn't have a lot of choices but if its neighbor appears after v then it will contribute to a backward arc and in which case there is no control over which bucket it goes to okay so this is where it fails the for the undirected case okay so this was the bucketing phase for the undirected case now again coming to what how are we able to cope up with this and design a and at least an approximation algorithm so for that i'll um, yeah i'll i'll just give uh, i'll i'll just sketch the proof of designing a two approximation algorithm in two per order n time though i promise one plus epsilon i have a last slide but i don't think i'll have time for that but the idea for that is based on the idea for this okay so now uh, how do we go about doing this again it is based on bucketing but it's not based on the bucketing that we were trying to do for the undirected case it was it's, it's it's based on a different kind of bucketing and let me uh, define what that bucketing is so in this case we do a bucketing where buckets have sizes b and the following properties hold 
if there is an edge between uh, if if u if u v is an edge then either the bucket of u appears after the bucket of v in which case like this will correspond to a backward arc if not then u and v should be in adjacent bu buckets okay note that the previous bucketing also satisfies this the previous bucketing was the one from which you can derive a solution right the previous bucketing will also satisfy this like if if you have buckets of size b but it's but the other way around is not the case like even if i give you such a bucketing there is no guarantee that there is a solution which can be obtained by taking some permutation here followed by some permutation here and so on right so this bucketing is necessary to get the solution but it's not sufficient but what we show is that this necessary bucketing is enough to get a good approximation okay so this is what i'll call a useful bucketing so again it is it is assigning vertices to buckets of size b such that uh look at any any arc either it's a backward arc in the bucketing or if it's a forward arc then the end point should be in consecutive buckets or maybe the same bucket Th this is this is my definition of a useful bucketing and now first of all how do i find useful bucketing but forget that first but if if we have a useful bucketing do we see a two approximation algorithm suppose i give you this bucketing If I have this bucketing, I'll I'll give you the following ordering. I'll order the vertices in the first bucket arbitrarily, followed by the second bucketing, and so on. No, how how long can a stretch of an arc be? Any forward arc was between two consecutive vertices. The bucket sizes are b and b, so the stretch of the arc cannot be more than two b, right? It's as simple as that. So it's enough to give such a useful bucketing. And uh, now, how do we get such a useful bucketing? So for this, we do the following. um actually maybe i should have pointed it here during the bucketing phase see the the essence is the following so the reason this bucketing phase didn't work for directed graphs was because some some vertices will correspond to backward arcs and we didn't know which vertices will correspond to backward arcs right so at at a, at a very meta level like it's 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 not it will it's not clear a straight forward but like uh, if we have some information about the edges that are gone, going to be backward arcs there is for example if i knew all the edges that are going to be backward arcs then i can then i can execute this bucketing phase easily right so this is what we want to achieve but this is very expensive so but what it turns out that even if we have some information of the backward arcs at various points of times then using this some information we can still achieve a single exponential algorithm but it comes at a cost of approximation so so that's the idea and now what do i mean by some information of backward arcs and not all information this is encapsulated here so we begin with it's it's a divide and conquer algorithm so we have to fill these buckets so we so we first start with the following thing we guess which vertices will go to the first like first half of the buckets and which vertices will go to the second half of the buckets so we like we guess the left and right it will take some 2 pi n time but note that so this is what i mean in a sense after having guessed this we have we know that all the arcs from here to here are going to be backward like if i know that in the final ordering these vertices appear before these vertices so there are if there are any arcs from right to left they are going to be backward so this guess 2 pi n time guess gives us this information right but again i'll not be using this insight crucially but this is the essence of the algorithm but if if it's fine if you forget about it so so we guess this uh, what is in the left and right part and now i want to do a divide and conquer okay let's see what goes wrong if i solve this problem L like the problem on these vertices and these buckets independently and the problem on these vertices and these buckets independently so uh, okay so the the problem being like uh, i can solve this problem independently this problem independently but uh, what happens to the across edges that that goes but note that in in this particular case this is for two approximation whatever arcs go across these vertices have to be present in this bucket like this particular bucket that is just uh, before this line and these vertices have to be present in this bucket because the forward arcs are to be in consecutive vertices right so in this case we just decide to put these vertices in these buckets and then recurs now it doesn't matter how i solve the problem here provided i put these vertices in this bucket and it doesn't matter how i solve the problem here right so that's the essence and this leads to a divide and conquer with this kind of a recur recursion and this gives a two to approximation 
So for one plus epsilon approximation, it's a little tricky. So first of all, the bucket sizes change, and uh, I'll just say quickly, it's not like, for example, when you have these vertices, it's not clear which bucket they'll go to. But note that they don't have a lot of choices. They'll not have a lot of choices. So and we can branch. So that's the idea, and that's it. So for open problems. Um, as I said, for undirected bandwidth, there is, an exp there, there is a polynomial time algorithm for fixed B. For this problem, it's easy to see a polynomial time algorithm for B equal to 1. But for B equal to 2 itself, it's not clear whether it's polynomial time or NP hard. So it will be good to know it even for B equal to 2. And then, of course, the generic problem which started this study. Can we design a 2 power order and algorithm for digraph bandwidth in general graphs without approximation? 